Hello Animals fans and welcome back to the Animals Universe. We're doing another analysis today and we are looking at Andalite force fields. A rather vague topic but one that actually doesn't contain much information and I think there's a reason for that. Now there are a lot of force fields in the Animal series but they're mostly Chi and Yerk force field technologies. Whether the Yerk one is derived from Andalite technologies, we can't, we can only speculate. So today we are only talking about the known cases of Andalite force field usage and implications we can, we can make from other stuff. So you'll, you'll understand as we, as we go through. So let's firstly look at examples where we see Andalite force fields in action and primarily it is on spaceships. So let's go through a few examples. One of us will be have to reel outside on a rope or cable. Someone will have to hold that rope and someone else will have to be on the end of that rope. And do what? Pull the time matrix in through the hatch? That will mean losing all our air again. We don't have the force fields anymore. Then the princes shouted for the warriors to drop weapons. They ordered me to raise defenses on the Intrepid and go to condition one. A split second later, the alien vessel fired at us. It was a very powerful weapon. They caught us only half ready. See, sensors are less effective when used while defensive force fields are raised. The attack crippled the Intrepid. Half our people. There were many casualties. Chaos, as you can imagine. Blood, computers down, communications down. The TO, he was, he was socked out into space before the force fields could close the breach. It would take a great deal of energy to sustain a hologram that size, Axe pointed out. To maintain a force field in water would take the energy level of a dome ship. Life support was intact. The low power force field that kept the transparent dome from being crushed by the ocean's pressure, all that was intact. I instructed the airlock computer to draw of 90% of the water. This took a few minutes. When it was done, the creature was still able to move, but only in two dimensions. His dorsal fin and part of his back were exposed to the air. His belly scraped the floor. He kept moving, restless. Afraid? Impossible to say. Airlock computer, create a force field to contain the water and prevent it spilling into the outer chamber. Allow me to enter the airlock. The computer erected a force field just three feet high, just enough to hold in the water and the creature. Above that three foot wall of energy was open space. I could easily leap over. Computer, form a force field that will constrict the creature into a narrow rectangular space. The water receded from both side walls. The creature slammed into the force field, retreated, tried to turn and suddenly could not. The blue blade was now held within what amounted to a very narrow tank. There was dry floor on either side of him. Myrtle and I were fortunate to have salvaged many things after the crash, Gefindelan explained. Most important, a good power supply and a force field generator. The latter is particularly necessary for our survival. This last example we've just covered, that last quote, quote is uh, it proceeds the only other time we see an Andalite force field in use that is not associated with ships. And this is it now. Zip. Ah! I hadn't even touched the glass, but a nasty electric jolt sent me toppling over, almost upside down, less than a foot from the glass roof. I righted myself, flapped furiously, desperate not to touch the glass, not even to get as close as I'd come a second before. Marco! The greenhouse was surrounded by a force field. Only natural for Gefinland to go to any lengths to protect himself. So that was a lot of quotes there. Those were... That, grammar. Lots of quotes. <laughs> and those are all the times where we see and like force fields in action. So primarily it is to do with ships. And the one time it isn't something to do with a ship, the generator was taken from a ship in order to generate a force field. So... That implies that the generator, uh, the, the force field is created by a generator that can be removed from these ships. So these, they are made by a unit that projects this force field outward to create probably some sort of, well, initially circular, spherical, that's a better word for it, thing. Like I've got this picture here, it's just a sphere, a blue sphere. But we also know 
from Axe trapping the shark in the dome ship underwater that it can change shape and be adjusted via thought speak communication because what he did there he said to the computer make a rectangular force field three foot high around this creature and the computer that controlled this dome ship made the force field do exactly that so it's malleable the first quotes were talking generally about what you'd expect them to be used for so they, they create force fields around the ships and if that force field goes then you lose something <laughs> like it contains things it almost like creates its own gravity sort you know what i mean where if you've got a planet like earth you've got an atmosphere and that's created by gravity so the further you go from the planet the less stuff you have to go through because it's all gathered into like it's this bubble okay or look at jupiter for example a gas giant you know it's all collected it becomes like a force field doesn't it sort of you know physicists tell me i'm wrong but it also acts as a defense so like mendrash pointed out they had to raise their defensive shields but they did it too late and so the ship was attacked and the to was sucked out into space and all that sort of stuff and because the force field wasn't properly up they were <laughs> completely scuppered effectively so what this force field around the ship does if a ship is attacked firstly it's defensive so the weapon probably won't breach that force field but also if there's a problem with a ship like the hatch opens then it creates its own sort of gravity which holds in all the stuff so all the air won't be automatically just sucked out into space it holds everything in okay and i think that's pretty standard for sci-fi force fields the other thing that we covered there was the strength and in a dome ship specifically it has enough strength to hold up this glass dome even when underwater and axe also says that you need a certain amount of power for a force field to work underwater so now we're start starting to get into power levels okay which is where this quote comes in handy one big problem tobias said there's no force field over the meatpacking plant it is too large an area i explained as you know energy expenditure for a force field increases exponentially to put it in simple terms if a field containing 10,000 of your cubic feet uses energy denoted as x a field containing 20,000 of your cubic feet will not use 2x but rather x cubed hey cassie said in alarm i actually understood that i never understand his technical explanations what's happening to me i was pleased by my success at reducing a much more complex reality to terms simple enough for my human friends to grasp this isn't talking about an and like force field but if axe has this knowledge then surely it applies to andalite force fields as well so now we're talking about things that we can imply from other stuff about these force fields now i've left my note screen up here because i actually did a bit of a calculation and mathematicians out there you now i i lasted maths in a levels which is 16 years ago 14 to 16 years ago something like that i did maths i did further maths but that knowledge is all sort of falling out of falling out of my head now so mathematicians do tell me but that doesn't seem right so if let's put some numbers out there so you need 10,000 meters squared area covered by a force field and that takes x so on my notes here i put that as five so five watts so i'll put five w you know just for it as a hypothetical so five watts powers ten thousand square meters because you americans don't use it. i don't know what you freaking americans use feet or something like that. i don't freaking know but according to axe double that area so twenty thousand feet would require not 2x which would be 10 which is fair but x cubed so that would be if x is 5 for 10,000 that would be 125 
So, 5 watts to, to power enough for 10,000 square meters, and 125 to do 20,000. That, that doesn't seem quite right to me. And then if you take the next example, so what I've done here is I've doubled it again. So we've gone from 20,000 to 40,000. Again, mathematicians, correct me if I'm wrong, but in order to equalize that, we now have to cube the cubed number. So previously, to get to 20,000, we did 5 cubed, which made 125. Now, if we double this number over here, we need to cube this one over here again. So it would be 125 cubed. So to cover 40,000 square meters with force field, would take 1,953,125 watts. Now, again, I'm not sure if that's right. So 10,000, 5, 20,000, 125, 40,000, basically 2 million. It, it doesn't seem right to me. So yeah, any mathematics out, mathematicians out there, crunch those numbers. Is this correct? Because it just doesn't feel correct to me. But this is where you come in, okay? So let's move on. What else can we imply? We do know, we actually see more examples of andalite force fields. I stepped back into the shaft and off at the second tier. The hallway was dark. I stepped forward and felt the creepy crawly sensation of passing through a force field. It was easy to figure out what the force field contained. My stomach turned. It smelled like death on this floor. Sour, putrid, the rot of diseased flesh. The force field kept the stench from permeating the ship. I see the force field, I called out. Be careful, Marco. Let me tell you, I more than realised I could definitely be fried in the force field. But it was a spectacular thing to actually see. A colour I'd never seen as a human. Unbelievable. Indescribable. Something I later learned was called bee purple. It's the colour between yellow and ultraviolet on the spectrum. Too intense for the human eye to see. Too bad. Because it was intense. And running right through it, easily marked, was a curving tunnel. Actually quite wide for a bee. And the tunnel led ultimately to a small hole in a glass panel of the greenhouse's back wall. From these two quotes, we can make implications about the Leanderlite force fields. The Uralic River one, in book 38, it's protecting part of the ship. It's a force field inside the ship. And it stops a smell from getting through. So Axe is able to walk through this thing, but it stops smells moving out. So that's a very strange use of a force field. And the other things we can imply from book 40, uh, with uh, the Gefindelan's greenhouse one, is that it can be broken up by certain objects. So let's use this, because I've got hay fever, I need a freaking freaking tissue roll next to me at all freaking times. But force field comes down, but if you put this tube there, the force field goes over, but it doesn't go through the tube. It allows that hole for the bees to go through. Speaking of needing tissue, bear with me. Hay fever is actually killing me this week. Honest to God, I keep rubbing my face. It's itchy, it's buggering awful. I wouldn't wish it on my worstest enemy. So, in the greenhouse, so the bees can get through. But there are occasions where it lets physical beings through, but not smells, which is absolutely bizarre. There are a few other things that we can imply. And that's looking at, at various Yerk force fields when Axe sort of chimes in and says, oh, th th this reminds me of Andalite force fields. So let's go over those now and then we'll do a big discussion about force fields. What fun. Axed explains the way the hologram of the pillar and its force field were created. A ship, probably Visa 3's blade ship, was parked maybe 10,000 feet above the hotel. It was cloaked so it would be invisible to radar and eyesight. It had to hold its station perfectly, never wobbling. It beamed the holographic picture and the force field down through the roof of the banquet hall. It took enormous, 
unimaginable amounts of energy. Especially with inferior yet technology, Axe had said snidely. And like technology would do it better, of course. But Eric and the other Chi use holograms constantly, Marco pointed out. Their visible bodies are holograms. Yes, obviously in that one area, the technology the Chi possess is somewhat superior even to Andalite technology. I am inside, he said. Ha! We're only 200 feet up. An Andalite force field would be 10 times this strong at this distance from the focus point. We also get one example where Axe sees a Melkoran force field and compares it. Let's take a look at that quickly. Out across the force field, they appeared very gradually. At first, there was just a ripple in the air, then a sort of bad TV picture full of static. Then the picture was clear and real and three-dimensional. A localised force field derived sensor shield, Axe said enthusiastically. Excellent. I'm going to cover that last one first because I, I need to remember that quote just as I've read it. So it's not written particularly well because it almost feels like Axe is talking about the McCord's projecting their bodies above the force field. It's almost like he's saying that is the sensory derived system. What was it again? Christ. Force field derived sensor shield. Sensor shield doesn't really apply to Macorans making visible images of themselves on top of it, does it? That sounds more like what the animals were doing, which was coming down and they hit the force field and they bounce back off. That sounds more shield-like, doesn't it? But the way it's written almost implies that Axe is talking about what the Macorans have just done, coming up and appearing staticky. <laughs> I think that what has happened there is Axe has seen that the force field activates once they get to a certain distance and it, and it happens at a localized hence him saying it area so it's not just always there it appears at the points where things hit effectively and why is this an implication for andalite force fields because we're talking about a mercoran force field but because axe no sees this and thinks ah that's the thing that must mean that the andalites have pretty much the same thing or something rather similar and he called it a localized force field sensory shield so that must imply that and like force fields have that capability and we've seen how capable these force fields are by force speak control they can change it like to a rectangular force field thing so it's not beyond the realm of possibility that they can have these little localized shields so that's an implication we can get from, funnily enough, the Makora from 65 million years ago. Axe recognised something of their force field and said, that's that's like our bibbidibbidi. Localised stuff. What was the other one? So, in... What was it? Axe was doing a bit of gloating at the Yerk technology, which... It doesn't really tell us whether the Yerk hologram technology and force field technology is derived from Andalite technology. It might still be but just not updated or whatever have you, because it has been a few years. But Axe is saying that this pillar thing is a combination of hologram and force field technology. So force field bolsters the hologram. So the hologram is the pillar in the building, but the force field means that it, from the outside, it feels physical. So you, you can't go in unless you go through an archway, much like with the B thing that Gafinalan had where it was cut off by something with a hole in it and you can walk through that hole, okay? But Axe was talking about how how much stronger the force fields are. So he flew up to a certain point and was able to escape the force field because it was, like the Macor and stuff, localised. It had to be a specific area. And he was saying, oh, our, our technology, we'd, we'd, be, we'd have to travel another 20,000 whatevers <laughs> or something to get over that wall. So he's basically just saying, ah, the Andalite force fields are a lot more powerful than the Yerk ones, ha ha ha. So that's all the quotes covered. So I've done this video a bit different to our normally, to how I normally would, which is probably why I've screwed up in a couple of spots. But I just wanted to bring it all and then at the end, think about how it actually works. So what is a force field? Well, it's like a sci-fi trope, isn't it? And I think that's how it's pretty much used in animals. It's just like, oh, force fields are a thing. Let's throw a few of those there. How does it work? God knows. <laughs> just, there's a force field. 
and it's all blue and wibbly wobbly like this thing here. <laughs> Hence why everything's blue. I don't know if you've noticed. I imagine force field is like, it makes a massive concentration of mol of atoms at a certain point, like a line. And so it acts effectively as a wall. So you compress all these atoms into such a compacted area that it effectively acts as a shield. Whether that's what they had in mind when they were talking about force fields in the Amor series, I don't know, but that's just sort of off the top of my head think, what would a force field be? Why would they call it a force field? Because it's... Field is effectively a specific area, and force can be pressing, like the pressing force. Hence, this field is a highly pressurized area, which would probably explain why Marker got injured when he was in Gefinland's greenhouse, I believe as a bird at the time. And it was like an electric shock because he's flown into this area where there's a really high concentration and it's that means that there'll be a lot of energy because all these atoms will be vibrating against each other. The denser it is, the, the hotter it will be. So it's almost like a burn or an electric shock to him. So that's what causes that. So you probably don't want to touch force fields like straight on because it probably would hurt. hurt. Although in some cases, like on the Macoran homeworld, they were able to stand on top of it. But that's Macoran technology, so it's probably a bit different in some ways. 65 years, 65 million years probably changes technology a bit. It obviously takes a lot of energy, which is why for the Intrepid, when Mendrash was talking about how, well, we didn't have the defensive shields up, we were in the midst of getting them up, they can't have it on all the time because it's such a massive power drain. So it's got to be a very specific situation where they say, right, we're about to be shot at, get those force field shields up until we can leave the situation and turn it off again and, and save the power. So yeah, it's, it's highly power inefficient. <laughs> it takes a lot of freaking power. But it's still, the Amblite force fields are still a lot more powerful than the Yurk ones, but they are a far more advanced race. It does make me believe that either they took, and they probably did, they took the force field technology from the Andalite ships that they stole back in the 60s, but never found a way to upgrade it. And so 30 years down the line or so, the Andalites have improved their technology, whereas the Yurks have been left behind. 30 years can be a lot of difference, especially when you're in war, because that's when you usually get your big technological breakthroughs is when there's a war on. Unfortunate as it is, but that's when people are pressured into making these developments. So there probably is a big gap there. I don't think the Yerks will have taken their... I mean, they might have done. They might, might have taken their uh, force field technology from another race. But I highly suggest it would be Andalites because they did take Andalite ships, which no doubt would have had some sort of force field technology on them. But we're not here to talk about Yerk force fields, so that's going to be for a later video. We're just talking purely about the Andalite force fields. And I reckon they're blue in colour, like the like my surroundings. Why? Because the Andalites tend to like blue things, don't they? And it's the colour of the good guys. Although calling the Andalites the good guys in this series is actually probably not true. It, it, it's very nuanced, isn't it? Perhaps they should have a more neutral colour, like beige. Beige force fields. Either way, they have great control over the force field, so we saw with Axe being able to manipulate it to create certain shapes, but we never really see it again doing anything like that. In fact, Andalite force fields, we hardly knew ye, because we don't see the Andalites very much, and even when we do, they don't really use force fields all that much, so yeah, we don't see much of them at all. So we can't really say anything about them at all. All we know is that they're probably a lot better than Yerk technologies. So when we eventually get onto the Yerk uh, force field video, we can probably just imply it's a lot better than everything we discussed in that video. <laughs> I might as well do the Yerk <laughs> force field video now, but no, I'm not going to, I'm gonna save it for next time. I'm not gonna do it here because that's speculation that they stole, they 100% stole it from the Andalites. And we can't be sure of that. So it's not going to be in the same analysis. My one big problem with the Andalite force field is that it is a trope, isn't it? It's a sci-fi trope. It's there's nothing. They don't add anything to it. They don't 
delve too much into the whole what is it what does it do why is it it's just there because it's sci-fi and in sci-fi you have force fields and it just feels like that's what it is <laughs> that's the explanation for why it's there why they have the technology how it's used it's just it's a sci-fi trope so there it is there you go enjoy so I was a bit disappointed when doing the research for this because I thought there would be a little bit more. There was a couple of little bits, but it just seemed arbitrary and weird. So, and like force fields. Try better next time. I mean, I can't be too harsh because it's just a freaking defensive shield for ships, isn't it? So, whatever, we're here to do these analyses, and I've gotten to the point where each time I, I say whether I like it or I dislike it at the end. So this one, yeah, uh, didn't really need it. <laughs> didn't really need it but only because we were never put into a position where it was explained to have been needed really it could have been used another way but I don't know I'm rambling again aren't I so that's Andalite force fields not very much to them we'll have much more fun talking about Yerk force fields further down the line maybe it's going to be the next analysis let's find out here we are at the spin the wheel game is it going to be Yerk Force Fields? It would be rather annoying because there's a lot more to it and I want a small one. I want a damn small one. After August, give me the big ones then because I'll have a lot more time to do it. But for God's sake, let's have a small one, please. <laughs> please, what's it going to be? I'm going to see if I can read it through the the screen on my, on my camera. What's it going to be? Oh, I can't read that. What is it? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> oh no no oh. <laughs> well I suppose it fits in with this one doesn't it Andalite fighter spacecraft it's going to be a big video isn't it it's going to be a big freaking video ugh Expect some smaller videos dotted along the way. <laughs> Andalite fighter spacecraft. Oh my god, the Andalites are so boring. I've come to that conclusion. Like talking about the Andalite force fields today, it was just like I'm not. I'm not. It's like one of the worst ones I've researched so far. It's just so like. Uh, I'm hoping. I'm hoping this one's better. I hope so. Plus, I can save some research from this one to go to this one. How fun. So look forward to... <laughs> I'm so negative today, Christ. Look forward to Andalite Fighter. It's, it's the hay fever. Isn't it? That's what's... I've been miserable all day because my face has just been like... Ugh. Need more of this stuff. I'm almost out. I'm almost out. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Look forward to Andalite Fighter Spacecraft in the next analysis. Thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you then somewhere else in the Animos universe. Ta-ra!